I'm an average man. And I am an average woman. One thing about being the average man, leading the primitive life, it gives you plenty of time for thinking. My wife thinks a lot. It's true. Although we're living 10,000 years ago, I do think a lot, but then so does he. Though being average, he only thinks average thoughts. In fact, we're both so average, sometimes we think the same average thoughts, so we don't even bother to speak to each other. Hmm. You know, I could tell you precisely what she's thinking now. She's thinking, what would it be like to move forward 10,000 years in time and live in the 21st century? Oh, <gasps> what's that? Oh. 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 It's a time machine. Oh, oh, crikey. Oh. Look at that. Hey. Oh. Hello? Oh. 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 What's that? Oh. Hey, look. What are those? Those things he's holding? They look like square bits of... I, I, I don't know. It, it's all so complicated. What's that? I don't know. Hey, they seem to be doing things for each other all the time. And everybody seems to be depending on those little pieces of... Oh, no, look. They were ground pets, those. Was she going to eat that? Oh, hey, they look just like us. Oh, except they're wearing those funny clothes. I wonder if they think like us. I bet they do. He's thinking... How did we get into this amazing state of affairs? Wouldn't it be lovely to have lived 10,000 years ago, before life got so complicated? Yeah, and she's thinking, what was it like 10,000 years ago when there were no banks, no factories or offices, no post offices or mobiles or computers, no shops or supermarkets? In fact, what would it be like to be us? I bet they got it all wrong. I bet they think it must have been paradise 10,000 years ago with nothing to do all day long except enjoy themselves. Mm, that's right. They think we spend all day getting a nice suntan, <laughs> feasting on the bounty of nature. When he wants something to eat, all he has to say is... Is lunch ready? Ooh, coming, dear. I bet he thinks he's completely independent of everybody else. Yeah, and that he's his own master. Oh dear, they've got a lot to learn. I suppose they'd imagine a community of folk like us, living 10,000 years ago, in a wooded valley cut off from the rest of the world by high mountains. Mm, the folk in Happy Valley, they call us. <laughs> Just the life, really. Enough work for everybody who wants it. No inflation. <laughs> Whoever heard of inflation when there's no money? Yeah. And no problems of one person having more than the other. Everybody here is absolutely equal because everybody is in the same boat. Yeah, and in the same conga line. Woohoo! <laughs> oh, yes, life is so wonderful here, isn't it? So easy and playful and happy. And that's how they think it was. If only they knew the reality. For a start, there's no machinery here to help us grow food. Everything is done by the painful sweat of the brow of you-know-who. And you-know-who. Mm. Have you ever tried rubbing away at poor soil baked like oh. concrete by the sun? Come on, get on with it. Oh, you get on with it. Oh. Poor kids, they flaked out. Get on with it, I said. You want to eat, don't you? Oh. The back-breaking jobs you have to do just to keep alive. And you'll have to be doing them over and over again. Year in, year out. Till your dying day. And then one day some people think, oh, there must be a better way of life than this. There will be those who say, but we've always lived like this. My father and his father before him lived like this. Well, that's no reason for going on the same way forever and ever. Uh, sometimes there doesn't seem to be much choice. Until you think about it. The fact is, life can be rough and it can be short. Suppose somebody's taken ill. Well, there's certainly no nurse or doctor just around the corner. When somebody gets sick... They die. The average age a man can expect to live to is only about 30. Many children die very young. The truth is, Happy Valley is threatened in lots of ways. <gasps> Get up quick!
quick. Oh, go back to sleep. Get up, get up, get up. I, I know I heard something, I did. There's something outside. Go back to sleep. Oh. You're always imagining oh. things. Oh, oh. oh. It's, a, it, it's a wolf. I told you. It's a wolf. Oh. Oh. And that's how it is. When wild animals raid the valley's livestock, it's a major disaster. The animals can't be replaced overnight. Where would they get them from? There are no markets, remember? And then winter comes, and everybody has to live on grain or the few root vegetables they've managed to save from the summer harvest, if they're lucky. And that's all there is to last until spring. Don't worry. It's bound to be a mild winter. I can feel it in my bones. In a bad year, there's no surplus to put by. They have to rely on what's dug out of the frozen earth, if anything. And if you're really unlucky, that can mean starvation. Hmm. A mild winter, you said. Don't worry. It won't last. You'll see. Mm -hmm. But somehow or other, people did survive. After all, we couldn't be here talking about them if they hadn't, could we? Well, that's true. And we had everything. Snow, floods, wild animals. Uh -huh. Yet we survived. Still, there was one thing we didn't have much of. What's that? Choice. Mm -hmm. For instance, they can't choose one job in preference to another. They just do whatever's necessary to stay alive. And they do it hour in, hour out, day in, day out, week in, week out. This way of living is called a subsistence economy. It needs all the efforts of every able-bodied member of the community just to stay the way they are now. And there's nothing to spare for anyone else. Anything they don't need for themselves today, they keep for themselves tomorrow. And all this isn't just a piece of history or a bit of imagination. It all happened thousands of years ago. It's true, and it's still happening today, for real. You know, about a quarter of all the people in the world today live on less than one dollar a day. They produce barely enough for their basic daily needs, and sometimes not even that. In a poor country like this, for instance, Approximately 95% of all adults work on the land. They're very poor and their lives are very hard. Of course, there are always those at the top who do very nicely, even in a country like this, but most are constantly threatened by disease and famine. People like this are essentially living like their ancestors. They're on the very bottom of the economic ladder. They're one step above extinction. 95% of the population of many developing countries work to produce food just for themselves, and that leaves hardly anybody else to produce other goods and services. In Britain, only about 1% of the people work in agriculture, but more than half the food we eat is produced on our own farms. In the US, just 2% of the population are farmers or farm workers and they produce enough to feed the remaining 98% of the American population, with enough left over to export vast quantities to the rest of the world. An American farmer producing 1,000 tonnes of wheat a year will only need a few hundred pounds of this for his family. What he does, in effect, is to swap the wheat he doesn't need for cars and trucks and tractors and new fencing and all the other things he wants for his farm and everyday life. The goods, in fact, produced by the vast majority of Americans who aren't required to work on the land. Just consider these two ways of life, and the astonishing fact that they can both exist at one and the same time on our small planet. How can this possibly have come about? Why has this happened in some countries and not in others, even though they may have the same climates and conditions? How can people at a subsistence level ever lift themselves off the bottom rung of the ladder? What's the secret? The secret is producing more than you need for your own immediate use. The point at which a community can create a surplus is the point at which it can begin its long march towards a wealthier life. It's also the beginning of the science of economics.